Chapter 1. A good idea does not need to be perfect. It only needs people who are willing to get the job done. Instagram is this mirror on ourselves, and it allows each of us to contribute our own experience to the understanding of this world. Chris Messina Each month on Instagram, more than one billion people post pictures of the different things happening in their lives, hoping that they reflect something about who they are or who they aspire to be. They also interact with posts and each other, aiming to form stronger networks, deeper relationships, and build personal brands. This modern way of life has gone on for quite a long time without a proper reflection into how the world got here and what it means. Instagram was one of the first apps to fully exploit our relationship with our phones and has drastically impacted the way we live. This summary takes you behind the scenes with co-founders Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger and explains how their decisions have made Instagram what it is today. Whether you use Instagram or not, the world is changing. Businesses are adjusting their strategies to cater to the new visual way we communicate. They strive to make their businesses worthy of photographing for Instagram. Having a high follower count on the app also comes with a lot of advantages, such as becoming a brand ambassador and raises your chances of successfully promoting a product. Keep reading to discover how Sarah Fryer chronicles everything behind Instagram's success, the struggles, the wins, and how it has and will impact our world as we know it. Chapter 2 Kevin Systrom did not stop creating apps until he found something that worked. His persistence birthed Instagram. In 2005, Instagram co-founder Kevin Systrom met with Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg wanted to add photos to the Facebook experience beyond the single profile picture that currently existed and thought Systrom would do a good job of building the tool. Systrom, who considered himself an average programmer, had already built a website called Photobox, and this was the center of Zuckerberg's interest. But he decided to further his education instead. During the course of his studies at Florence, Italy, Systrom interned at Odeo, a company that made a marketplace for podcasts on the Internet. It was there that he met Jack Dorsey, who worked as an engineer. After this period of internship, Systrom left to work at Google. He made up for his lack of technical ability with his vast knowledge and created random tools. The first service he created was called Dished, and it helped people rate meals instead of restaurants. He also built a website called Bourbon. It let people say where they were and where they planned to go so their friends could show up. In January 2010, he met with Steve Anderson, who was willing to invest in bourbon, on the condition that he found a co-founder. Systrom spoke to another Stanford student, Mike Krieger, and discussed the idea of running bourbon together. Krieger agreed, and they decided to make their product a daily habit for its users before trying to make money off it. Systrom managed to convince Anderson Horowitz to put in $250,000 into the bourbon project, and soon after, Steve Anderson invested $250,000 as well. Jack Dorsey also supported them with $25,000. After a while, Systrom and Krager decided to improve it by building an iPhone app version, but this didn't get a positive response from other investors. Instagram posts would be art, and art was a form of commentary on life. The app would give people the gift of expression and escapism. Sarah Fryer Krieger and Systrom decided to find a way for the app to deliver photos to other social media platforms as well as offer photos with better quality. This led to an improved app that had filters could allow people to like photos by double-tapping, and showed followers and following at the top of the app. Cole Rise, a local designer who had heard about their work on the app, volunteered to test it and create new filters of his own. He ended up turning in four filters that made pictures even better. They decided to name the new app 
Instagram, a combination of Instant and Telegram. They picked good photographers with high Twitter follower counts as their first users. These users set the right artistic tone and created good content for others to look at. On October 10, 2010, Instagram launched to the public and went viral quickly, and on the first day, 25,000 people were using the app. Chapter 3 Systrom and Krager decided to make Instagram as consumer-centric as they could. Due to the fact that Krager and Systrom created Instagram with minimalist features, they had several server meltdowns and customer support problems. This meant that when users had a problem with the app, they were unable to fix it themselves. They sought the help of Joshua Rydell, a former community manager at Next Stop, and soon hired their first engineer, Shane Sweeney. Systrom and Krager divided tasks based on what they were good at. While Systrom was the one who handled relationships with investors and the press, Krager worked behind the scenes to fix the engineering problems. Anybody can build Instagram the app, but not everybody can build Instagram the community. This is your power. Use it. Steve Anderson. Rydell came up with an idea to host an Instameet. This was inspired by hashtag tweetups that Twitter users for years had used to meet people that they followed online. About 30 people attended the first Instameet and shared their enthusiasm for the app. They also discussed more ways they could capture the world's beauty. Krager and Systrom understood and embraced their different roles. This helped them run Instagram successfully. In 2011, brands such as Pepsi and Starbucks had made accounts, and media organizations such as CNN and Playboy also joined in. But Systrom insisted on not paying anyone to use the app. Rapper Snoop Dogg was the first celebrity to post a picture on Instagram, and this made a lot more people join the app. By the end of the summer of 2011, Instagram had about 6 million signups. Justin Bieber joined, and his manager, Scooter Braun, proposed that Bieber invest or Systrom pay him for his content, else he'd stop using the app. Systrom refused to pay and insisted that he wanted people to simply enjoy the app. Bieber left Instagram, but his then-girlfriend, Selena Gomez, loved to use the app, and soon Bieber was back. At this time, Jessica Zolman joined Instagram as a community evangelist to get other people excited about the app. All the things that Instagram was doing well were also priorities for Twitter, and many people thought they were owned by the same people. But Instagram kept getting more valuable and finding a path to the mainstream. More celebrities were joining in, including Kim Kardashian, Taylor Swift, and Rihanna. And in 2012, President Barack Obama's account was launched. Meanwhile, the Instagram team was growing. More employees were coming on board and working to make Instagram better. Chapter 4. Krieger and Systrom wanted Instagram to remain independent. Zuckerberg understood this and allowed them to make most of their own decisions. By 2012, the news of a possible Instagram acquisition was all over Twitter, and with this came the fear that Instagram would take over from them as people's preferred app to share photos. Twitter's chief financial officer drew up a term sheet for the acquisition and offered between 7 to 10 percent of its stock for the deal since Instagram had between 7 to 10 percent of the 130 million users that Twitter had. This offer was worth 500 to 700 million dollars. Systrom refused the offer. Instead, Systrom sold Instagram to Facebook for $1 billion, and employees were scared about what would happen. They feared that Facebook would dissolve Instagram and change the app completely. 
Sistrom had turned Dorsey down a month earlier on the grounds that he wanted to build Instagram, but Zuckerberg understood that all Sistrom wanted was independence. Zuckerberg stayed in business by making Facebook more entertaining for users and buying or copying competitive apps. Zuckerberg was able to convince Systrom that Instagram was going to be its own product but was going to blossom under Facebook's care. Systrom agreed to be bought by Facebook and not Twitter because he felt Facebook's value was likely to go up so the value of the acquisition would grow over time. Also, they would no longer be a competition for Instagram, but would, instead, share their entire operations infrastructure with them. The fact that Instagram was independent, even after its acquisition, helped Zuckerberg win some other deals, especially in 2014, with WhatsApp and the virtual reality company Oculus VR. The biggest challenge of a merger is not maintaining growth and longevity for the products, but in navigating the ego of their creators and the separate cultures of their companies. Sarah Fryer Twitter's leaders decided that since Instagram was going to be part of Facebook, it should be treated as a massive competitor. They blocked Instagram from access to their network and confirmed that they were no longer helping Instagram grow. Chapter 5. Instagram created a culture that kept everyone and everything in check. After the acquisition, Facebook started to face a decline in the photo-sharing behavior of its users because of Instagram, and a team set to determine that Instagram was not a threat to Facebook. Many people were skeptical about Instagram's growth, and Facebook employees questioned their managers about the value of the acquisition. Facebook's goal was to connect the world through social networking and aimed to do this by getting as many people as possible to use Facebook as often as possible. Every activity at the company stemmed from an obsession with growth. Facebook was all about personalization and tailored adverts to the different needs of its users. Everyone at the company could make changes to the code base as long as they could prove that their edit caused a boost for an important metric. Instagram, on the other hand, wanted things to be carefully considered and designed before they were released to people. Krager and Systrom decided to understand the pros and cons of Zuckerberg's moves by studying Facebook's successes and failures. In December 2012, Facebook decided to stop showing users pictures on Twitter and only display blue links that would redirect people to an Instagram website where they could see their photos. This made users post directly on Instagram instead of Twitter. After Instagram made a mistake in its terms of service, implying that they had the right to sell a user's photo, people were enraged and started to leave the app. Facebook's chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg, advised that they'd get a liaison between the two companies who would help both brands understand their needs. Instagram then hired a designer to rebrand their office and imported workers from Facebook. Then they came up with three Instagram values. Community first. All decisions should be centered around preserving a good feeling when using Instagram. Simplicity matters. Before any new product is launched, engineers had to ensure that it would not complicate the app. Inspire creativity. This means Instagram would try to frame the app as an artistic outlet, training its users to focus on content that was genuine and meaningful. The real value of Facebook and Instagram was in their network effects, the momentum they gained as more people joined. Even if someone enjoyed using an Instagram competitor more, if their friends weren't on it, they wouldn't stay. Sarah Fryer Chapter 6. Zuckerberg acquired Instagram but failed to understand its culture. This was a source of strife between him and the co-founders of the app. Systrom had created a place on the Internet where the most interesting people could be followed by others, praised, and emulated. 
He grew that community with an editorial strategy that drew attention to top talents. Zuckerberg, on the other hand, had created the largest network of humans ever. He chose to grow that community by tweaking the product constantly to pursue a greater share of the time people spent on the Internet while trying to beat his competitors. Systrom and Krieger always urged their employees to do the simplest things first so they could track their progress and easily make changes. Sarah Fryer The Instagram acquisition made other social media apps get attention from investors. More apps were making their features about videos, and soon there was pressure on Instagram to have a video feature too. Krieger and his team came up with one that allowed people to make videos of up to 15 seconds. Meanwhile, Zuckerberg kept looking for more apps to acquire. He discovered Evan Spiegel's Snapchat app. First known as Peekaboo, Spiegel created an app that allowed users to send a photo that disappeared after a few seconds. Zuckerberg let Evan know that if they didn't work together, he would launch a different app that did the same thing as Snapchat and crush him. Zuckerberg carried through with this threat and launched Poke, an app that allowed people to take pictures and videos that vanished within seconds. But this app was not successful as it lacked the quality and feel of Snapchat. He offered $3 billion for Snapchat, which Spiegel refused. Zuckerberg then decided to get better at understanding teens and how he could recruit them back to Facebook since they could not acquire Snapchat. Facebook's acquisition of a tool called Onovo helped them know more about the apps that people liked, how often they used them, and helped them see which competition was on the rise before the press did. Zuckerberg tried to get his employees to build more interesting Facebook competitors. He wanted to create the next best thing. He hosted a three-day hackathon, launched an initiative that sought to bring more people to the Internet who would be potential Facebook users, and he also leveraged on Instagram's success. After the failure with Snapchat, Zuckerberg and Systrom set out to acquire WhatsApp. But WhatsApp's CEO, Jan Coombe, was highly entrusting. He agreed to the deal when Systrom and Zuckerberg reassured him and his co-founder, Brian Acton, of their independence while also offering them $19 billion, a seat on the board, and freedom to stay in its offices. Chapter 7. Many celebrities were able to build their careers on Instagram because the app allowed them to connect with a lot of people. Charles Porch, who managed Facebook's relationship with top celebrities, informed Systrom that they needed to go after the top users of Twitter and YouTube and try to transition them over to posting photos on Instagram. From Oprah Winfrey to Miley Cyrus, he had a list of celebrities that he believed would be able to draw their fans to Instagram once they joined. Porch and Systrom both went to Los Angeles with a new feature to woo celebrities. Verification. It was a feature that Twitter had to prevent impersonation, but had only evolved into a status symbol for important users. Facebook was the app to beat in terms of financial success and size. Twitter was the one to beat in terms of cultural impact. Instagram had to find a way to combine the two. Many celebrities welcomed the idea with mixed feelings and wondered if they'd still be able to manage paparazzi and their jobs. Systrom was quick to assure them that they could control the narrative with the pictures they posted. The Instagram community team focused on discovering users who were becoming prominent in specific categories like fashion and music. At this point, several industries were undergoing many challenges and wondering if a popular thing on Instagram was actually valuable in real life. Instagram was just starting to try advertising and was focused on training and curating content that could serve as examples to other users, getting celebrities to share the -the behind-the-scenes details of their lives. We need to keep people feeling good about Instagram for as long as possible and to avoid losing user trust. 
To do this, we need to focus the press on the users and not the company itself. David Swain, Instagram's communications chief. Facebook, on the other hand, was still trying to build a solution to getting more celebrities to use the social network. In 2014, they made an app called Mentions that celebrities could use to track and communicate with their Facebook fans more easily. They also built an app called Paper that remade Facebook entirely as a more magazine-like experience, putting the focus on high-quality content from publishers. Both products flopped because, besides the inconvenience of being separate apps, they were technological solutions to a problem Instagram was solving with human interaction. Did you know, by December 2012, Snapchat had millions of users, most of them between 13 to 24 years old, snapping 30 million times a day. Chapter 8 Instagram was not perfect. It brought a lot of pressure for its users. Pressure to be perfect in every photo. Instagram didn't have to worry about a lot of things like other social media companies did because they were comfortable in Facebook's care. They easily found employees, launched new product features, and could copy Facebook's strategy as much as they wanted. But Kevin Systrom didn't want to lean too heavily on Facebook because he didn't want to lose what made Instagram special. He wanted the app to be known for its simplicity, thoughtful design, and high-quality posts. He focused his team's efforts on preserving the brand, avoiding major changes, and training the app's biggest users and advertisers so they could serve as models for everyone else. To solve the problems that came with having many users on the app, Instagram partnered with celebrities such as Miley Cyrus and Kylie Jenner to address issues such as LGBTQ discrimination and body image issues. As Instagram became more widely used and as Facebook added pressure to grow and advertise, Instagram employees became, at first, even more insistent that the app was about beauty and art. They had just launched five new filters, but users already had phones that could take better pictures. By 2015, many users had built small photography businesses, and Instameets had become about business too. More businesses were becoming more concerned about aesthetics, and more people were doing things just so they could post on Instagram. People on the community team decided to be more intentional about who to highlight in campaigns with celebrities, as well as with news articles and on the at Instagram account. They promoted what they felt was their standard fare and avoided posting anything that encouraged unhealthy trends. Instead of the algorithmic popular page that showed the photos of popular celebrities, they built an explore page instead. This page ranged from food to skateboarding and was curated and handpicked by members of the community team and not via automated selection. Instagram needs to lean into the influencer trends that have suddenly started. The app is full of young people, and this is something Zuckerberg would do anything for. Liz Pearl Head of Teens, Liz Pearl, focused on getting to know particular Instagram communities that were made up of young people. She interviewed their most popular members and kept note of how they used the app. Liz made sure that when Instagram launched new features, they demonstrated them with teen influencers. This strategy was a success. Young people were obsessed with Instagram, and in 2015, 50% of teens in the U.S. were on the app. Chapter 9. Mark Zuckerberg realized Instagram's growth was impressive and was determined to not let it outshine Facebook. Instagram's analytics team showed that the app had emphasized celebrities and influencers so much that users' feeds were full of famous people who didn't follow them back. This meant that average people were on the app to see what professionals were up to and created fewer of their own posts, posting only when their photo met a high quality or importance. 
To reduce the pressure to be perfect, they thought they had to come up with a way for users to post things that disappeared, like Snapchat stories. In August 2016, Systrom launched the idea of Instagram stories that disappeared after 24 hours. You have to care about the community you have, but you also need to think about the people who have not even experienced the product and don't have any preconceptions. Kevin Systrom Instagram was getting closer to becoming the number one destination for pop culture on the internet, but Twitter had something Instagram didn't. The Pope Zuckerberg and Systrom arranged a meeting in the Vatican with the Pope, and he decided to join Instagram in March 2016. Facebook encouraged more news publishers to post on their app. This meant their users were discussing top news, which, at that time, was the election. As Facebook became a destination for these discussions, it became a problem because fake news was easily spread. When Donald Trump won the election, the media generated several theories for how it happened. The top theory was that rumors about Hillary Clinton were pushed by Facebook's algorithms and promoted to millions of Facebook users. Soon, Facebook faced a decline as a number of users started to spend less time on the app despite Zuckerberg's efforts to make the app better. He blamed Systrom for this decline and insisted that if Facebook had adopted the Stories feature first, they would have made more impact. Systrom decided to make Instagram more user-friendly. He came up with the idea that allowed users to control comments and the number of people who followed them. At this point, Zuckerberg expressed concern over Instagram's success and was bothered about them being a hindrance to Facebook's growth. In 2017, Zuckerberg made a decision. Instagram was to build a prominent link to send users to Facebook, and he removed the link to Instagram from the Facebook app. Chapter 10. Facebook and Instagram had different cultures. This created an unbearable strain that led to major changes. After Instagram changed its feed using algorithmic ordering in 2016, people using the app for promotional purposes realized that they would need to completely revise their strategy. The new feed order prioritized users' closest relationships instead of random posts on the app. The fact that likes, followership, and comments attract people to an account makes it easy for brands to deceive users. This is what we do not want. Kevin Systrom One of the many deceptions that happened on Instagram was the Fry Festival that was promoted by Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid, and Emily Ratajkowski. It turned out that the man behind this fake festival was a con man named Billy McFarland, who ended up being arrested and forced to pay $26 million in restitution. Businesses born of Instagram that succeeded were those that leveraged on the psychology of their users while simultaneously creating interesting content. The debate about whether Instagram threatened Facebook's dominance caused a strain in the relationship between the two teams. Zuckerberg kept pushing for adverts in WhatsApp status, but this would mean chipping away at the encryption to get more information about the users of the app. The founders, Brian Acton and Jane Coombe, resisted the idea and decided to leave Facebook in a deal that cost them $850 million in stock. In 2018, news broke that Facebook had allowed the developer of a personality quiz app to obtain data on millions of users, which he shared with a firm called Cambridge Analytica. This firm retained the data and used it to build their political consultancy. The story targeted many of Facebook's weak spots and resulted in a fall in Facebook's stocks. During a meeting with the U.S. Congress, Zuckerberg was able to convince the regulators that Facebook didn't mishandle the data and they got revenue through ads. Once Instagram launched IGTV, Zuckerberg worried that it would affect Facebook's branding because as people curated their experience, they were investing in their accounts. 
He ordered that Instagram be taken off all the support tools that Facebook app offered and was also not allowed to run free promotions within the Facebook newsfeed. Without Facebook's help, Instagram's growth slowed to a halt, and this confirmed Zuckerberg's argument that Facebook helped them grow faster. After a few months, Systrom and Krieger decided to resign. It had been eight years, and they had lasted longer than anyone expected they would. They thought it was time to go back to their creative roots. Adam Mosseri, one of Facebook's top leaders who became head of product at Instagram, took over as head of Instagram. Conclusion You should be able to take a chance and build something of value for the world that should be able to grow and be worth a lot and use that to give back socially. Kevin Systrom Over time, the hustle for growth and relevance backed by data has become what drives modern life online. More people are becoming addicted to Instagram and businesses have picked up stride and made profits through Instagram. These two very opposite effects of Instagram and social media at large make it quite confusing for many users. Zuckerberg, knowing this, has made sure to try to acquire even more social media apps that could pose as competition to Facebook Incorporated. In the months after Krieger and Systrom left, he was about using Instagram to take on TikTok, the Chinese app that had replaced Snapchat as the top threat to Facebook's dominance. A debate about whether Facebook has too much power is a topic that has garnered a lot of attention in the 2020 U.S. presidential campaign discussions. Politicians and academics alike argue that Facebook inflicted damage on society by not keeping track of the ways its users work to influence people through misinformation. The app that was developed to have a lot of cultural influence has somehow been mixed up in a corporate struggle over personality, pride, and priorities, and this continues to be a problem for the users in more ways than one. Everyone has a role to play in ensuring these new trends do not take away our humanity. If we all use social media positively and encourage others to do the same, the world will be better for it. Try this. Make a detailed plan for an idea that you've been nursing. Identify a problem it might likely solve. Seek help from people that you think can help you and just go for it.